Welcome in to the Moody Center here, the number one seed in the Regional Four. The Texas Longhorns out to a commanding start. Drexel is the 16th seed coming out of the CAA. They tried to work their way back. Jimmy Dykes, Tiffany Green here with you. Vic Schaefer's group is poised to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament, and his group's got 30 wins this season. They are a well-rounded bunch. Yeah, they are, and there's great value in being a one seed when you consider that the one seeds have won 31 out of the 41 women's championships in NCAA women's basketball, and Vic Schaefer knows he's got an opportunity. Now, they're down a kid, losing their point guard early in the year, but they have stepped up in so many ways. Their pressure right now is relentless on Drexel. That's what has them out to a 13 to six start. That pressure, that press is not gonna go away. They are more athletic, bigger, faster at all five spots than the Drexel Dragons. Time now for Get More, brought to you by Geico. You spoke of that pressure. A couple of steals helped to convert into points, and that pressure just too strong for Dragons. Yeah, even with the loss of Rory Harmon to a knee injury, the Texas starting point guard and defensive player of the year last year, this nonstop, relentless pressure for Texas is still in place. They are big, they are fast, they are physical. Vic Schaefer have coached against him. He is known for absolutely lighting up the ball with ball pressure, denying one pass away, making you make plays instead of run plays. And that's why they will be very difficult to handle in this women's championship. In seasons past, when he's had success, he's been known as the Secretary of Defense, but he was quick to correct to say, hey, the reason for our success this year is because of our offense, one of the top scoring teams in Division One, and that's what's led to this 30-win season. Yeah, think about it. They are averaging 112 points per 100 possessions. That's a really, really good number. And it all starts that inside Jack Hammer the ball around the rim with those 6'4", six, 6'5", six, post players who win the Shots are falling from Shaley Gonzalez and Shea Holly. This is why this team is really complete offensively. And we haven't talked a lot about Madison Booker so far, but she is the absolute engine right there, 35 in white. A true freshman that assumed the starting point guard duties after the injury to the starting point guard. And man, has she handled the transition with poise and grace. Complete play. And you speak back to that December 27th injury to Rory Harmon. Since taking over the point guard just three days before conference play, she's put up 20 points per game in the absence of Rory Harmon, second team All-American and Big 12 player and freshman of the year is Madison Booker. You've got to do something if you're Drexel to knock off this pressure, Tiffany. If you can't beat them off the bounce, you're gonna to have to set some ball screens, maybe some dribble handoff action, but Texas is gonna to try to blow all that stuff up. It's just a really uphill battle right now for Amy Mallon to find points. Well, three in blue, Amaris Baker has been the score thus far. She's got four to six points for the Dragons. She steps on the out of bounds line and it goes to the Texas Longhorns, speaking of Rory Harmon, out for the season with a torn ACL. Boy, she was off to a crazy good start for this season and a player that they certainly missed, but her presence still very much felt on the bench. She is very much involved and a voice for this group. Yeah, no doubt. Think about it. She's the Big 12 preseason player of the year and was the Big 12 defensive player of the year. And that's a huge loss that could eventually catch up with Texas on their chase to the final four. Well, Gaston falls to the floor and it's off the Longhorns. And this is Coach Harmon as she's been dubbed. The graduate assistants, Ryan and Mason, gifted it to her shortly after the injury. And that's how she remains plugged in and locked into the game. Yeah, I mean, she was very vocal yesterday in practice. Not just saying empty words, man. Her, her. Her voice had meaning and trust and care behind what she was saying. I thought his entering Vic Schaefer yesterday was not pleased with how his team practiced. He circled them up at the end and said, this is not how one seed should be attacking this tournament the day before this tournament begins. And he knows he's got a chance to get there, but it's gonna take absolute focus from every young lady involved. Well, he knows exactly what it takes to get there, having made two national title game yeah. appearances in his previous stop at Mississippi State. The march to Cleveland begins now, and great defense from the Longhorns. Back the other way, Shea Holly getting in a little bit closer to Strong. Gaston 
the Big 12 Six Player of the Year into the ball game. We were told she may not be available before today's game, but we see her on the court in her first two points. Yeah, wasn't feeling well prior to tip, but what a tremendous backup post player. The sixth man of the year in the Big 12. She comes in physical at 6'2", plays bigger than her size, and again, another pressure defender that Vic Schaefer puts on the floor. Baker looking for a shot, pulls up, and it's true. Okay, six of the eight points have come by way of Amaris Baker. So far, she is the pressure release for this Drexel offense. A lot of pointing, a lot of talking, a lot of passing people off in this matchup zone. Amy Mallon believes in it because she played this matchup at Richmond. There's great value when you're coaching a defense that you played yourself. Amina Muhammad tracking down the rebound, the mid-range from Booker won't go. Muhammad too strong, a lot of opportunities for the Texas Longhorns once again. We're working the offensive glass. Again, the size advantage over, and then Gaston finally finishes off that possession. But it took him two or three misses to get to that point. Vic Schaefer asked him yesterday, how do you get better right now within this tournament? He said, we've got to finish at a higher clip around the rim. Pretty good example of it on that last possession. Brooke Mullen handling the ball. The niece of Chris good pass. Mullen into Aaron Sweeney, and Sweeney is fouled, the and one. And she'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, you mentioned the, the niece of Chris Mullen, one of the all-time great basketball players that we've had at the college level in the NBA. Brooke Mullen's got a tremendous feel for the game. There's value in her. She started on Villanova's Sweet 16 team before transferring to Drexel. Man, you mentioned Chris Mullen, Tiffany, <laughs> an All-American at St. John for Louis Carnesecca, 16 years in the NBA. Most of that with Golden State, a five-time NBA All-Star. What a great basketball name here in Austin, Texas this afternoon. Well, part of the offensive success of how Texas has been able to put up 81 points on average this season is because they like to go inside so far. 14 points in the paint. There, a missed opportunity on the jump shot. It's going to be Drexel basketball. Texas not afraid to run their dribble drive against that matchup because you, I think you attack a matchup zone like you do man to man. You've got to get people movement, ball movement. Don't be afraid to screen it. Run some set plays, but you cannot be stationary and guard yourself. On the inbound, you see the full court pressure. Madison Booker giving chase. Drexel, who started one of seven, was 4 of 4 until that last shot and miss from Baker. Julie Gonzalez looking over. She's got a lot of time, long 2,000 point score. Long skip pass over to Booker. Time winding down, got to look for a shot. Aaliyah Moore with the ball in her hands. One second to go on the shot clock, puts it up. And Just go make a play, huh? Did not feel the shot clock pressure. Aaliyah Moore is a difference maker. Vic uses her as that mismatch four. Man, is she hard to handle in that position. Junior out of Moore, Oklahoma, second team all-conference selection in the Big 12. Man, Drexler's got a shot fade. Get that pressure off. Back cut really well done. I mean, you talk about burning pressure off with a fast, purposeful back cut. Drexler just performed it well. Yeah, we've seen it a couple of times yeah. on the offensive end for the Dragons. So after a roaring start from the Texas Longhorn, Drexel within seven as the closing seconds of the opening quarter here from Austin. Keep Texas off the offensive glass here if there's a miss. There's Shaley Gonzalez. The putback won't go. And 19-12 is how we will close the first 10 minutes of the first round. Men's basketball championship first round continues tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ABC. UConn hosts Jackson State. Then Caitlin Clark leads Iowa against Holy Cross. And ESPN has Kent State 
squaring off against Notre Dame at 215 Eastern, then USC and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Boy, we have got a full menu. We got every game covering you all the way to Cleveland. Boy, Caitlin Clark, and just what a phenomenal college women's basketball player. She has been nation's leading scorer. She shows out in the biggest moments. And here, Amaris Baker is showing out. She has picked up eight points for the Drexel Dragons and all inside, all right around the rim. Good job cutting out the timeout for a pressure release for your guard to break free. And Amy Mallon took a timeout about what, three minutes into this game, has settled her kids down. And they're getting out in front of that Texas defense in transition. Just missed a couple of easy ones though. The length of Texas bothering them. Back the other way, there's Madison Booker. Rims it short, Gaston comes up with the offensive rebound. We talked about how solid of a rebounding team they are, especially on the offensive glass, just creating multiple opportunities on the offensive end. So Tiffany, what do you do against this Texas pressure? You've got to spread them out and you've got to have some burn off the pressure plays and Sweeney right here, 13 in blue. I mean, that's not an easy pass to make, about a 20 foot pass. And you got to throw strikes against this pressure. I mean, this is what Drexel needs more of. And you're going to have to back cut it some, finish at the rim, spread it out. It will certainly help Drexel's cause if they can make a three. And Texas now has to spread out even more. That's the only way to offset that ball pressure. Gaston knocks down the first of two free throws. As Amy Mallon saw her team down 13 to 2 at one point in this game. They've worked their way back. That backdoor cut certainly working for them. It's 21-14 now. I know this. No team in the country had more fun at practice yesterday <laughs> than the Drexel Dragons, <laughs> right? Absolutely I mean, they right. They came in taking pictures, dancing, hyped up, really enjoying the moment. And this is a proud program. This is the second NCAA in the last four years. And they also went to a couple of WNITs in 2022 and 2023. They expect success in March. And I love that visiting with Amy Mallon in terms of the vision she puts in front of her kids. Well, she's been a part of all three now of their NCAA tournament appearances the last time in 2021. She said it was much different because it was COVID during that time. Yeah. So you didn't have the same type of feeling and atmosphere. She says, you better soak all of this up because this is special. Taylor Jones back into the ball game. Remember, she got off to a hot start. She's got six points. It is hard to single coverage if you're Drexel in this game against those posts. I talked about Taylor Jones. Just, I recruited her for a couple of years, offered her when she was coming out of the eighth grade, has always had great high IQ, understanding of the game, physical, tough, loves the game. A kid that is uh, in that Texas workout facility 6 a.m. just relentless in pursuit of what she wants to do. Booker says no man. The rejection from Madison Booker, folks. She's a headliner. Texas is a big show here, but Madison Booker is the ticket of why you want to watch. Tiffany, an AP second team All-American as a freshman. And she had to adjust positions midway through the year from a small forward to a point. Booker comes up with the rebound. Most outstanding player we mentioned of that Big 12 tournament, but you talk about that AP All-American, first freshman in UT history to earn that honor. Jack Olenga, Moore and Tonda, who checked into the ball game a couple of minutes ago. She'll go to the blonde. And the accolades and the uh, acknowledgements continue to roll in for Maddie Booker. I mean, Big 12 Player of the Year, shared that honor we mentioned already. Big 12 Freshman of the Year. If you're a coach, which one are you most proud of? Well, the one that's not on there, humility. And she is loved by her teammates. And she loves the game. She has a huge personality. But you step in as a true freshman and you rack up all those trophies, all those awards, all the smokes following you, and your teammates love you and the first ones to cheer for you, that says a ton about Madison Booker. And we haven't seen as a better freshman year in the women's game in a long, long time than what 35 and white has done for Vic Schaefer. 
When you think about the first time in NCAA tournament history, there are multiple one seeds led by freshmen in points per game. Madison Booker, one of them. Juju yeah, Watkins, Juju, also yeah. another number one seed with USC. He is a full star. Madison Booker is so strong and confident with that 15-foot pull-up shot. Up ahead, Grace O'Neal finding Baker. Baker, who has had success. And Booker, who has been the star all season. Four rebounds now, five assists. Got it. Second chance for Muhammad, it goes down. But Tiffany, you see Vic Schaefer's concern as they progress throughout this tournament. They miss too many easy ones right at the rim. Mm -hmm. Something they've got to look to shore up here, this Drexel group. Finding shots, some of them just not going down. Madison Booker says, let's slow it down. Maddie, Book, so many nicknames, I call her the truth, just because of the way that she is handled this freshman season. Amina Muhammad back-to-back -back buckets for the sophomore. Yeah, Texas just bigger, more physical at all five spots, and Vic Schaefer can invert his offense, and not just the post kids that he'll throw post-ups to. I mean, Drexel, they're getting one shot, and that is it. Nothing at all on the offensive glass. Small team, they got to shoot lights out to stay in this game. Aaron Sweeney with an open look. One and Tonda comes up with the rebound. Texas currently on a 10-0 run as they've stretched this lead out. Madison Booker looks gassed right now. Yes. And part of her adjustment to the point guard was the conditioning, not only the physical fatigue, but the mental fatigue of all the things that a point guard has to do. And man, has she grown well in those areas. Coming up with the rebound is Jasmine Valentine. Grace O'Neill, the sophomore point guard for the Dragons, looking ahead. Valentine, shot fake, going into the hoop too strong. Yeah, Matty shared with us, hey, look, I had to adjust to this new position, but I had to think about how I'm going to play, how I'm going to set up my teammates, how they play, where they like the ball. There you go. Really good job by Taylor Jones to show a target hand. Showed the passer, told the passer without vocalizing, this is exactly where I want the ball. So that pass, what does it do, Tiffany? It leads a post player right to the right side, the ability to use the glass. Show the target hand, bam, deliver, lead me to the glass. Really well done by Texas and Taylor Jones. The reaction on Selection Sunday for the Texas Longhorns when they learned that they were a number one seed in Regional 4. The excitement, the joy, and I love how Deanna Gaston, you see her in the front, she's going down. Yeah, let's, let's party like rock stars because we're feeling like that right about now as we take a look at the bracket. The winner of this one will advance to move on to the second round game. 8-9 matchup with Alabama, Florida State. How would they match up? against both of those teams if Texas were to move on. Yeah, Alabama and Florida State, they got athletes now. They got speed on the floor, which could be a concern for Texas. If the game stays the pace that Texas wants to play and they can hammer you inside, they're a real problem. They could be suspect to a fast up and down type game. We shall see. But I love the excitement for Texas. They understand, I said it earlier, Tiffany, the one seeds have won 31, 31 of the 41 NCAA tournaments. That's why you're so excited. You know, man, that bracket's got a chance to, to fall our way when you get that one seed. South Carolina, Iowa, Texas, and Southern Cal right now in really good shape in this women's tournament. South Carolina currently in action now. We'll obviously see Iowa the oh. ball. And coming out, and that breaks a cold spell for the Dragons. They had missed their last eight shots, but it goes down for Grace O'Neill. Yeah, when you struggle in the half court, you've got to score off of your defense, get out and run. Drexel's done it a couple of times. And can you find points off those special set situations out of bounds? Well, the high hands for Taylor Jones, the offensive rebound, and she's fouled on that putback. She'll shoot a couple. 11 O-boards for the Longhorns thus far. Well, think about it. They, on the year, Texas has gotten 42% on the offensive glass. So for every 100 shots they miss, they get 42 of them back. That's a very high percentage. 
Part of that, though, is also tied to the number of shots they miss around the rim. They're getting <laughs> second and third opportunities, and boy, as you advance in this tournament, you got to make those first ones against the toughest teams out there. Well, Jones, who leads all scores on the court now with 10 points. And to that point, we talked about the eight second chance point opportunities for the Texas Longhorns. Drexel being pushed out so far, trying to run their offense. Can't even get inside that three point line. Tough pass to handle Lane McGurk. The true freshman looking where to go, picks up her dribble, and it's going to be a shot clock violation for the Dragons. That'd be so tough in basketball when you can't win your battle one-on-one -on -one and blow by that pressure. And Amy Mallon knew it yesterday. She said we're going to have to be really good with our screen game, our flares, our pin downs, all the stuff that we trust in our five-out offense. It has to click, and when it doesn't, the pressure just eats them up. Outside of the obvious, Jimmy, here, the interior and the inside points for Texas. What's worked for them offensively as an offensive foul is going to be called against Amina Muhammad? Well, the, the best friend that Texas has in her half-court offense is ball reversal, because what that does, now those post players can pin and blow people up and get an angle to score with on the inside. They've been good at it so far in this game, but the ball reversal is Texas's friend this entire tournament. Should be. The 16th seed Drexel team has got some work to do. They got within seven points, but since then, Texas has overwhelmed them in this second quarter, outscoring them 14 to four. Another deep into the shot clock. And a turnover for Drexel. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. You mentioned Caitlin Clark earlier. 96 threes she's made this year from 25 feet or beyond. <laughs> 96 from 25 feet or beyond. When you peep her shot chart, she just loves it inside. I mean, I mean outside. Yeah. And, and, and the deeper that she can go, the, the, the better. Yeah, and the left side of the floor really favors her numbers on Synergy, but she is must-watch TV this month. No, D, no doubt. Division one record for most points of the season. 18 for the D1 record. And that one flipped up by Shaylee Gonzalez. Tiffany, I've, I've coached against this Vic Schaefer pressure. It's the real deal. And if you don't have guards who can go by and knock that pressure off or run some burn cuts to back cut it, life can become really, really difficult. And he lost his best defender in Rory Harmon. I mean, she's the all Big 12 defensive player that really put heat on the ball. But overall, that ball pressure is still there. 169 assists now for Madison Booker on that inbounds play. And that's second most in program history behind the aforementioned Rory Harmon. For a freshman, might I add. Good look there at Aaliyah Moore. Remember, missed most of last season with an injury, coming off a terrific Big 12 tournament, averaging just about 11 points a game, but she upped it in the championship at 14 against Iowa State. And two tall for Taylor Jones, his last touch by the Longhorns. Upsets already happening in the women's NCAA championship. Middle Tennessee State, an 11 seed, takes down the six seed Louisville. How about Rick Ensel's group out of Conference USA? Savannah Wheeler powers that group for the Blue Raiders. But this is what this time of year produces, right? The magic. You want to be playing your best basketball at the right time of the year. And nice take to the hoop from Jasmine Valentine. Yeah, Valentine just pulled the Taylor away from the basket and a little bit of a shot fake and got a drive angle. This time of the year, if you don't play your best, you will get knocked out. And we've seen it on the men's side. We'll see it on the women's side. We've only had one number one seed ever lose in the opening round to a 16. 
and happy to stand for back in 1998 as Madison Booker strokes it true. You would never, never guess that she's a freshman by the pace that she plays, always in com complete control of her game on both ends. And in talking with her, Jimmy, it's just the poise, right? There's yeah. a self-assuredness that you saw with her. There was a confidence that she had, but it never came off cocky. And the players, her teammates, have really gravitated to her and honestly, somewhat in awe of what she's been able to do yeah, yeah. in her freshman season. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, 35 and white, if I described her, I would say she's the type of kid that it's not about me. And as good as she is and the rising super, superstar that she is, Nothing about her game, nothing about visiting with her, nothing about her personality on or off the floor makes it about herself. And those type of leaders have the ability to lift a team up to another level that they're probably not capable of reaching. Well, coming up at halftime, Dove in the studio will have highlights from earlier today, documenting obviously that Middle Tennessee State upset over Louisville, along with Caitlin Clark and how she's preparing for her final tournament. She's declared entry into the WNBA draft coming up, and obviously folks in the Midwest certainly excited as Indiana, the number one pick. They look at some of those kids that are in their last NCAA tournament, Caitlin Clark, Rakia Jackson at Tennessee, Cameron Brink at Stanford, one of the all-time great defenders in the women's game, I think three times in a row, right? The Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. They will make the most of their last opportunity. Be very difficult to knock those kids and those teams out of this tournament. Stanford coming in as a two seed, both Brink and Kiki. Wow. Harrison. Wow. Okay, yeah. Grace O'Neill says, yeah, I can do that. Just give me a chance. Just give me an opportunity, and I can make something happen. The arch on that shot almost <laughs> hit the Raptors of a beautiful Moody Center. Beautiful indeed. $375 million put into this facility, an all-purpose facility. How so much? back in... $375 million? That's what I have wow. right now. Not surprising, but... M maybe I'm missing a period there, but I, I think I, I saw 375. No, I think, look at the arch on this shot. When you're a small guard against size, you got to do something sometimes just to get it off. But my first time to be in this arena, and I will be in here a lot with mm -hmm. the uh, Texas joining the SEC starting next year. But, man, they knocked it out of the park. I love how the top part has big... Uh, I don't know if they're screens, curtains, screens they're that screens, they, they can yeah. retract for for uh, concerts and, and almost double the size. That's what we're looking at right there for basketball. They close those things off and make it a very intimate, loud facility. One of the better ones I've seen right now in college basketball. Really well done. Premier venue indeed. Go back in 2019. And meanwhile, down the street, they're, they're tearing down the Irwin yes, Center. they <laughs> are. Great memories in there. That, the, the Irwin Center, when I played for Arkansas, we hit a half-court shot at the buzzer to beat Louisville to advance us to the Sweet 16. One of the, one of the great memories I had as a player in the NCAA tournament just down the street. You learn new things every time. Yes. I learn new things about your partner every time. <laughs> I just enjoy it. I love it. <laughs> I would, I would have loved to have seen your celebration, though, because I heard you're a great dancer, you know. Uh, you put on some old-school Commodores, Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> <laughs> you think the building's hot now. The elements will see how Book can cook before the end of the half, and it rolls out, but a convincing start to this one for the number one seed, Texas Longhorns. They've got a 20-point advantage halftime here in Austin. And it's time now for the Halftime Report. We'll send you over to the studio. You're watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. A 20-point lead here for the number one seed in regional four, Texas Longhorns, as we check out our game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Both teams shooting 40% or better, but you look to the rebound category, and that explains a whole lot. Yeah, Tiffany, when you're a one seed, you got to come out and, and play like a one seed. What do you do if you're Texas? You play to your strength. You hammered the ball inside. I think you got 26 paint points if you're Vic Schaefer, and you're 27 to 10 on the board. That's the strength of this Texas team is that big physical front line, along with the play of Madison Booker, who has just been outstanding. Not so much scoring the ball, but she does have seven assists. But it all starts with Madison Booker. 
Let's check out our most reliable team brought to you by Xfinity. Well, Ma Madison Booker is the DNA of this program, and she controls the pace as a passer, as a finisher, but it's all about hammering the ball inside, and Texas right now, they are playing to their strength, and you see why they have played their way into a one seed and how important that is. Just the relentless pressure defensively has really jumped out. I knew it would from playing against Vic Schaefer as a coach. And just Drexel, just really no answer for that pressure. And how did you defend it? What did you do at your time when you were at Arkansas coaching the women? Yeah, well, I did have some guards that could go by a little bit, which helped us. Uh, I will say this about Drexel, Tiffany. They are very well coached. They run good stuff. They spread you out and they run good action. They just have been covered up by a bigger, faster, more physical defender out of the Big 12. And Amy's watching her club yesterday and today. They execute well. They know exactly who they are as a team. They just are being outmanned right now at every position. On the inbound, Booker finds Aaliyah Moore. The defender falls down. It won't go. And those gimme yeah. right around the rim you touched on it earlier that's going to be a point of emphasis moving forward as texas tries to make this deep run yeah coaches know where they're vulnerable and that's the first thing vic said yesterday we've got to be better finishers at the rim our ball screen defense at times still has to sharpen up and tighten up as we move throughout this tournament and he wants balanced scoring more so than they've had in the last month nearly the identical play back into more once again can't finish there, fouled, no shot. Or not fouled on the shot, rather. So another inbound play for the Texas Longhorns. That personal foul going against Hedda Satman for the Drexel Dragons. That's her third. Taylor Jones runs into a couple of blue jerseys as she turns into the lane. And Texas will get the ball back. 16 seconds to go on the shot clock. Yeah, Texas just, they have not relied on the three-point shot all year long. Interesting to have that efficient of an offense. There you go. From the left side, it works for Aaliyah Moore. Really good job of little simple screening action, but Texas only makes four three-point shots a game. That's incredibly low for the number of points they score per 100 possessions. They are so good getting fouled, controlling the glass, controlling those Paint touches, the post-ups, and that inbounds play, just good action. You got Taylor Jones posted up, kind of a decoy on the ball side, just a little slip. Good job by Moore to slip right in front to the left side. Going inside, and that one's blocked by Shaley Gonzalez. Madison pushing back the other way, inside to Taylor Jones, and a foul by Chloe Hodges. Well, they have looked for 44 and white all game long. She's had success, and that's not a sign you want to see as Aaliyah Moore is walking back to the locker room. No, not at all. And then before the season, just nine games last year before a season injury, ACL, and she has really fought through the mental part of bouncing back from an ACL. Not good news to see already a team that's not at full strength with a loss of a stud and a star in Roy Harmon at the point guard spot. You want to be hot, you want to be healthy and hungry this time of the year in the NCAA tournament. So on the floor, Amina Muhammad in for Aliyah Moore. Grace O'Neal, smallest on the court, but boy, does she have a ton of heart. You see her right shoulder battled an injury during the season. But we were we were going through this Drexel team and, and learning more about them. Grace Harmon, or Grace rather, O'Neal stands at 5'7", but is the team's leading rebound. Isn't, isn't that something? <laughs> that tells you the heart and the valentine that kid plays with. I mean, how often do you see your your small 5'7 guard lead you with 171 rebounds? But Colonial all-rookie team a year ago, she's the youngest player they put on the floor for the most part, the smallest player, but and she jumps out with the energy and the fight that she plays with. Talking about 12 in blue at the top of your screen. A deep three from Brooke Bullen almost was mirroring her uncle if that one would have gone in. Front iron back the other way. Shaley Gonzalez off the bounce pass from Booker. And Maddie Book, who has been great today, she's got now nine assists on the afternoon. 
Mullen trying to go Jack Golke from last night from <laughs> Oakland, right? Jack Golke made 10 threes against Kentucky, 10 out of 20 on the men's on the men's side. He only dribbled four times to make those 10 threes. <laughs> you talk about coming off and catching and shooting with a purpose. Man, that was That mirrors big time. what we see from Caitlin Clark. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is the, the Caitlin Clark of the men's game. <laughs> Oakland upset in Kentucky last night. Meanwhile, Taylor Jones continuing to go to work inside. 13 points, better than 50% from the floor for Jones. Just keep the game simple if you're Texas. There's no reason to do anything else but continue to take advantage of your size and your skill that you got on the interior. Swinney picks up her dribble. Muhammad in her face. They move the ball around, Amaris Baker. He had eight points in that first half. Finding Satman, and Satman knocks it down. Look, the Dragons only knocked down about four and a half threes a game, so not a three-point shooting team either, but the first of the game for Drexel. Yeah, good job to make a shrink three. What I mean by that, Drexel made that Texas defense shrink to the ball, then the kick out, got a close out from the post player, and then that's what Satman can do for Drexel. The answer on the other end from Shaley Gonzalez. Boy, she's used to doing that more than 2,000 points in her career. And Gonzalez knocks it down. She's Tip a 30% three-point shooter. Yep, Tiffany, when she's on, talking about two in white, Texas can play and beat anyone in this tournament. And her ability to shoot the ball at a 36, 37% clip, along with Shea Hollyman, that, that changes Texas offensively. Stolen away, Holly wasn't expecting the pass from Gonzalez. Well, let's go back to Shaylee Gonzalez and how she can knock it down when you give her an opportunity. Well, two years ago, she was the West Coast Conference Player of the Year at BYU and suffered an ACL injury at BYU, but she transferred because she wanted to win titles. And Texas with a one seed right now, that is all in front of her. Short off the Booker miss. And Shay Holly getting a hand on it. A player that we haven't talked a whole lot about. You've heard her name, Ten and White, the senior out of Austin, Texas, all defensive team in the Big 12. And she is one of the top perimeter defenders. You talked about Rory Harmon going down. Shay Holly stepped into that role to be one of those premier defenders on yeah, and a, defenders. And an absolute local star. She's from Westlake High School here in Austin, Texas. Her dad, Eric, played football at UT as a defensive end, then played for the Kansas City Chiefs. Young lady already has her business degree, working on her masters. And Vic was so proud of her to be named to that Big 12 all-defensive team. Big time athlete, was a high school stud, star track athlete as well. And a dream to play for the Texas Longhorns, got her opportunity, what a great story as she worked her way through. Taylor Jones working through a couple of bodies and one. That time she just absolutely played right through the contact. Now this is a small front line for Drexel, but it gives you an idea of what Taylor Jones can do. Very patient and right there, man, getting those shoulders whipped around quickly, getting squared up before the release. Now, I've known her for a long time, spent a lot of hours on the phone talking to her and her sister Tori and Carly when I was recruiting them. She has always had a great, great love for the game. Out of the Dallas area, Forney, Texas, as Taylor Jones is having herself a great opening round game with 16 points. The pull up from O'Neal, no good. And Jones comes up with the rebound. Look up South Carolina, no problem today with Presbyterian, 91 to 39. And this is the second time they've met this year, Tiff. I'm, I'm almost positive South Carolina won the first matchup. 99 to 29. So Presbyterian has cut into it a little bit. <laughs> the number one overall seed, South Carolina, making their 12th straight appearance, entering undefeated, the only team on the men's or women's side in Division I. And Dawn Staley and her crew will move on to the second round. And Gonzalez, a couple of threes in this quarter, and that forces the Drexel Dragons to call a timeout. That changes Texas in this tournament. We know how powerful they are around the rim. They knock in the three ball to high clip. Man, they're going to be tough to knock out.
Welcome back to Austin. Let's check out the Star Stories brought to you by Honda. Taylor Jones having herself an outstanding game, 18 points. Aaliyah Moore back on the court. And how about a career high in assists for the freshman, Maddie Booker? Think about it. Texas has made 23 shots in this game. And Madison Booker has assisted on 11 of them as well. Almost every other basket has come off of a pass by 35 in white, not forcing herself into this game offensively. Texas doesn't need her to have that role today. Again, taking what the game gives you at the point guard is one of the highest qualities you can have. She only had three days of preparation when Roy Harmon went down. And Vic Schaefer said, I'm putting the ball in your hand, young lady. And you're going to be that lead guard for us throughout the entire Big 12. And Man, has she blossomed. Now, she did tell us yesterday she had a couple of weeks in preseason where Rory was out, and uh, she got a lot of run at the point guard spot, so she had some time, but would not like the pressure to come to the game. And there on the defensive end, coming up with the block, is Maddie Booker. Shaley Gonzalez stepping in a little bit closer along two. Very confident. I said going to break. That outside shot of Texas changes them. Because if you have to come out and respect those shooters now that inside one-on-one -on -one game the dominant part of Texas offense so hard to cover if you just watch still it's a 60 23 game the ball pressure is relentless the next pass away denial is relentless at all five spots a defensive clinic right now in the first round from Austin the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Well, let's check out the number one overall seed in the tournament for the third straight year. You talked about South Carolina handling Presbyterian in their first round game. They'll advance on to take on the eight seed North Carolina Tar Heels. And of course, more action underway in that bracket tomorrow between Oklahoma, Florida Gulf Coast, and among others. But when you think about Dawn Staley and the job that she's done, chasing perfection. Yep. This has been a season that maybe didn't start out with the expectation of getting to this point to be undefeated. You graduate all of your starters and then you have an experienced bunch come in with some experience, but you change your whole starting lineup and yet you see nothing fall off. National coach of the year, I would say, when you lose all five starters and Aaliyah Boston's one of them, and you find yourself at 33 and 0 right now, still chasing perfection the second year in a row, South Carolina entered the NCAA tournament unbeaten. We may not see that ever happen again, to lose your entire starting five and then rattle off 32 straight wins again the next season. That's a phenomenal coaching job by Don Staley. And I've been around her several times this year covering those men's games in the SEC. And they are locked in, laser focused, ready to try to cut down another national championship. I believe they've got everything you have to do it. And when you look at them, they're on the top left-hand side of your bracket as Shirley Gonzalez just seemingly can't miss from three-point range. Gonzalez now four of five from beyond the arc. The question is, who will challenge South Carolina on their side of the bracket? You got Notre Dame. We could potentially see that one as the rounds move through. Yeah, Notre Dame, Oregon, the Pac-12 with several teams in those one through four seeds but this is to me this tournament's all about south carolina if they are at their best and they stay injury free to me this tournament is theirs to win they just they look different to me than everybody else in the college game right now on the women's side and don staley when they got knocked out last year she went right back to work think about this the last time that South Carolina lost a regular season game December of 2021. That's how dominant they have been. Oh my God! Speed of domination. Dominant on the boards have been the Texas Longhorns. And Deanna Gaston, the sixth player of the year in the Big 12. She's come off the bench and done what she's done most of the season. 11 points, nine rebounds, and then great defense back the other way. And Tiffany, it has zero to do with the lack of fight for Drexel. Drexel's playing as hard as they can play. They are outsized and out physical at all five spots on the floor in this game. 
I said it earlier, Drexel is very well coached. They know exactly what they're doing defensively. Offensively, they run great stuff. They've just been covered up by Big 12 athletes the entire game. Nice. Really nice to win the foot race to the ball and to finish with the right paw on the left side. Those guards now, they've got another gear, and Vic Schaefer, Shaley Gonzalez, and Shea Holly, they play, you know, 37, 38 minutes. Very difficult to take them off the floor. McGurk, turnaround nice jumper. And McGurk with a couple of quick buckets for the Dragons. You think about the type of pressure, full court, and the defense that kind of just is in your face. To be able to play and log those kinds of minutes, you've got to be in great condition. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. I believe what Shea Holly ran a 520 mile in the preseason conditioning. That's a pretty good clip. And she could have ran college track Shea Holly as a sophomore in high school, as a former high school track coach. I know good time. <laughs> she was in the high 25s for the 200. So if she would have chosen track as her sport, Shea Holly probably could have been a track athlete, but the love of basketball took over. So wait a minute, Jimmy, let me get this right. A track coach, a basketball coach, and you could have also been on like, so you could think you could dance? I don't, uh, I don't know America. about that. I tried to make it as a country music singer at one point oh in my, my life. Oh well, well, look, you're in the right city, that, right? That, like that Austin or Nashville? Yeah, would have been. I, I'm sitting here by you, it tells you how good that went. <laughs> wow, yeah. nice. That one went well off the fingertips of Brooke Mullen. Look, she hit four threes in that championship game against Stony Brook. And she had 90 starts for four years at Villanova prior to Drexel. We talked about her uncle in the first half, Chris Mullen. Basketball is a, a big part of that family. I love to start the story from Drexel. In 1983, Tiffany, Drexel was the first university in the United States to require all undergraduates to adapt to the microcomputer for all their classwork. And Drexel provided Everybody, every student with a Macintosh 128. Ooh. And then they went on, Drexel did, to become the first fully wireless campus in the year 2000. You did your homework, my man. I, I did. love that. I'm, I'm all about that. Well, now that explains why they have, you know, strong business program, Absolutely. engineering program. So that makes sense. Do you, do you know what a Macintosh 128 looks I, like? I don't know what it looks like, but I know what Macintosh it is. It was probably heavy back okay. in the day. The first one to <laughs> lug those things around campus. There's a lot of cool things about Drexel. The only school out of Philadelphia, men's or women's, to be in the NCAA tournament. That's a prideful, prideful city when it comes to college basketball. I'll say this. Amy Mallon, who has been at Drexel for 20 seasons, she was on staff there with Denise Dillon, who is now the head coach at Villanova. But when they coached together, they brought in a winning tradition and program. We talked about their NCAA debut in 2009. They made it back to the tournament in 2021. And now here, Amy Mallon is leading the way in this 2024 appearance for this group. And they're doing it without Kishana Washington, a player who was a all-American and WBCA, someone who was just absolutely terrific, but she speaks to passing down the love, the knowledge of the game, but also sharing it for Drexel basketball. When you come in as a 16 seed, you know what you're up against, especially when you're facing the, the physicality and the size of Texas, but and still the joy that you have when you're playing in the NCAA tournament, the memories. I mean, Amy talked about it with us yesterday, the number of times she got to play in this tournament. And she made a great point. There are a lot of great players and great coaches that have never had the blessing, as she put it, to be on the big stage like they are on today. And she never takes it for granted. But I asked her, I said, how much value is there in Drexel right now going to the NCAA twice in the last four years, playing in the WNIT, when you go into the portal, you talk recruiting, that's a big, big deal. You want to win at that colonial level? Go to Drexel. That's your message, and I love it. Yeah, Amy Mallon was just so fired up. We talked about the energy that we saw in their practice yesterday. 
and just being where your feet are planted. And that's exactly what this Drexel group has done. Grateful for the opportunity to be here. And they worked hard to get here as Booker gets on the floor, but back into the hands of the Dragons. And Amaris Baker is fouled with 2.1 seconds left on the clock. Have you ever been where your feet aren't planted? <laughs> somewhere else, you know? <laughs> so so you got to soak up that moment. <laughs> McGurk, double clutch. And that brings us to the close of the third quarter. And it's been all Texas here. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. Well, it's, it's three kids for Texas that have done the damage. It starts with Taylor Jones. She's 7 out of 11 from the field. Everything's around the rim. Finishing at a high rate in this game for 18 points. And Gonzalez shooting the lights out right now. Four out of five from the three-point line. Texas only makes four per game. And that's what he's got. Booker has been fantastic passing the basketball. 14 assists for Madison Booker in this game. Texas had made 29 stops, so she continues to have an assist on every other made basket for Texas, and that's the most ass assists in a Texas game since 1994. Tiffany, she's closing in on the program record of, what is it, 17? Yeah, and most assists in a tourney game in program history as well, so quite impressive. And Shaley Gonzalez, who has the ball in her hands, had three points in that first half. She's lit it up here in the second half with 15 in three plus maybe a couple seconds. Yep. <laughs> We've seen several possessions of that dribble drive offense. That's that five out of six now for Shaley Gonzalez. But that dribble drive offense, a staple under Vic Schaefer. Gets that ball going side to side. Therefore, you can get post-ups on the inside and get the defense playing out of closeouts. She's responsible for all five threes for the Longhorns tonight for this afternoon. One of the few kids active right now in the women's game that has over 2,000 career points. And I said it, I think, in the first half. When Shaley Gonzalez is on, Texas can beat anyone in this tournament, including South Carolina. That one bounces in for Chloe Hodges. But you go back to Shaley Gonzalez, 21 points, ties her season high. I mean, currently seventh among NCAA active career scoring leaders. She can go off in bunches. Shock back over to Gonzalez. Gaston looking inside. And adding five makes the bucket. Just time and time again, those post players for Texas posting up with a purpose, getting their body right in front of the rim, winning the battle from the waist down. As a post player, Tiffany, you score from the waist down and you finish with your hands around the rim, but that scoring is all about winning the foot fight, and Texas has won it time and time again. McGurk step back three. Holly back in the ball game. Gaston temporarily loses the handle, gets it back. Hattie Fye going forward and into the hands of Lane McGurk. Out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. And there's Aaron Sweeney. And Hodges once more active around the basket. Comes up with the rebound and is fouled. The Aussie, who was named to the all-tournament team during that run to the CAA championship. Well, Shaley Gonzalez will go to the bench. A big round of applause here. 18 of her 21 points have come in the second half. If Texas is going to advance to the Final Four, she doesn't have to make five out of six threes per game, but she's got to shoot at a high clip. Texas has to drag that defense out. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to the NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships for the March 2 Cleveland. And the Final Four beginning... Friday, April 5th. We've got you covered all the way. And how do you like to consume games? On what devices? I, I'm a phone gal, but some people like to pull up their tablets or their laptops in addition to the TV. See this iPhone that I still have that they don't even make anymore? Right. Is it like an iPhone, what, 7? It's a 7. <laughs>
But that dude can watch games as well as anything out there. I, I just, I can't get away from that right there. Smart, but you can't do the multi-viewing. I took it in to trade up to get a better model. And the guy said, they, we don't even make these anymore. What model is this? <laughs> Temporary stoppage in play, and we're back to it. Grace O'Neill, and she's fouled on the tape. For our officiating crew, Eric Burton, Kim Hobbs, and Nick Capel, who have done a mighty fine job here this afternoon. Yeah, they get, they get graded in advance in this tournament, just like teams. How important was Grace O'Neill for that Colonial Athletic Association tournament run? Mm -hmm. I mean, she was playing 35 minutes a game over that past seven game win streak coming in. Just a tough, durable kid, just a sophomore. A really good piece for Amy Mallon going forward. And you think about the future for the Dragons, an important piece you mentioned. I mean, she's a player that coach says can take control when she's on the court. Vic has time and time again screened the top of that matchup zone. And there the screen is set, results in the high-low play. And it's just, it's been unstoppable for Drexel the entire game just because of the size they're dealing with. And the senior out of Maryland, Texas. Gaston going towards the way of Rory Harmon. And you see protecting protect a her. crown jewel in Rory Harmon as Vic Schaefer saying, okay, let's make sure you get out of the way. We want to make sure you continue to heal. I like those Texas burnt orange slacks that Coach Vic is wearing today, right? Yeah. yeah. Sporty. Sporty indeed. I mean, an Austin native nearly coaching for 40 years. They got themselves a top tier coach, the Texas AD, Chris Del Conte, said we wanted someone of his pedigree to come in yep. and take over, and what a fine job that he's done. And when you watch him, you understand in his coaching style, very passionate, demanding, but as Del Conte says, not demeaning. He wants the best out of his players, and he loves on them. You know, his daughter, Blair Schaefer, now an assistant coach on the staff as well. And we talked about the Mullen family in basketball, the name of Schaefer, awfully strong as well. The, the, the recruiting roots that Vic has in this state. And talking to him yesterday about his daughter, he said, you know what, I challenged Blair when she became a full-time assistant. You have to be able to recruit at this level. I don't need any help, coach. I need someone who can go out and continue to get me the high-level players and Blair has knocked it out of the park as a young recruiter at the highest level. Indeed, I mean, you think about Blair Schaefer in her career at Mississippi State, played for her father, yeah. and was thinking about giving up basketball, but what did she do? She went to work. She went to work and, and turned herself into one of the best defenders on the floor in addition to her sharp shooting. You know what, she was also a really good game analyst on the SEC Network when she first finished playing. After a couple of years of that, though, she talked to her dad and said, I just, I feel like I have more to give the game than what I'm doing. And a really hard worker. She had the scout of Drexel yesterday and was completely on top of the play calls and the, the guy practice players and a lot of trust and a lot of pressure when your daughter's on staff. And she has handled it well. Blair Schaefer along with Lindsey Wisden Hilton and Elena Lombardo, the associate head coach, round out that staff for this Texas team. Now 28 of their 31 years, uh, 38 wins this year have been by double digits. Texas averaging plus 23 points in their scoring margin. That's the sign of a team that can make the final four run. They, they hammer people. And they're doing it today to Drexel. They've done it to a lot of teams this year. And think about the strength of the SEC next year when you add Texas, a number one seed, and Oklahoma, who won the Big 12 regular season title. Correct. Those two teams go to an already loaded SEC. Oklahoma, and a part of the bracket with South Carolina, a five seed coming in. They'll get in action tomorrow, the Sooners. This Texas team entering the tournament won 12 of their last 13 games. And you can see why and how they've been so successful as a couple of shots on the goal and nothing coming up. The dominance that you've seen 
inside. Close to 50% of their points coming inside yeah. in the paint tonight or this afternoon. They've got 44 paint points. Wow, from the logo. Well, dialing up from the 215. <laughs> from the right horn of the Longhorn. <laughs> All smiles there that from was Brooke awesome. Mullen. Yeah. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. That's one way to knock the pressure off. Just shoot it over you. I love the story that Drexel, they actually won their conference tournament on Selection Sunday. Mm -hmm. So they hop on the bus and on the way home, they they stop to see where they were heading as a, as a 16 seed. And it's the joy that goes with that. Time out on the court will step aside as well, 81-39. Welcome back to Austin, Tiffany Green and Jimmy Dykes here with you. Drexel, you spoke of the joy that they had on Selection Sunday. Let's look back to when they learned the news that they were entering the NCAA tournament, coming off of that win earlier in the day in that CAA championship. Stopped at the Green Turtle in Bel Air, Maryland, which was the halfway point between DC and Philadelphia, and they said they had a party. That bus was rocking <laughs> once they got back on. Hey, they're still having fun. I, I love their last time out. There are a lot of smiles over there, some laughs going on. They, they knew what they were up against today, but man, they have made the most of their time. That's why I'm in big favor of if we expand the men's or the women's tournament, don't do it at the expense of keeping teams out like Drexel. It is the, the memories that these kids have from this experience is something you can't put a price on and the Drexel Dragons are always when it's tougher outs in their conference always one of the better defensive squads said multiple times how well coached they are just too much too much Texas today in Austin nice up and under from Chloe Hodges and I love one of the things that Amy Mallon talked about because we can that's something that she wrote on the chalkboard of the whiteboard they adopted late in the season, uh, somewhere around March. They started to believe that you know they could win. That's what fueled them to their six straight wins, their third conference title. And after that championship, she said, because we did. We can and I then we did. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, I love that. I mean, she's a very competitive head coach and she was a heck of a player. She played at Richmond and I think two NCAA tournaments when she was a player for the Spiders, then she transferred to St. Joe's her senior year. Amy Mallow was the A-10 player of the year and an honorable mention All-American. And actually, Tiffany, I believe in 2002, Amy Mallon was inducted in the Big Five Women's Hall of Fame for the best players in that Philadelphia area. So a lot of pride as Vic Schaefer starts to empty his bench. And what a special moment here, the applause. Sarah Graves, the sophomore coming in, her second game of the season, just third of her career. And a player who has been dedicated, a walk-on, earned a scholarship this season as Grace O'Neill launches it, no good. But knowing Vic Schaefer, she'll be held responsible for the last three minutes <laughs> on this film for what she does defensively. I mean, he was on her yesterday, knowing that she would, if she played, it only be for two or three minutes. Uh, he was on her yesterday for not being in the right spot on the defensive end. That DNA is true. It's the common thread for Vic Schaefer's best teams year after year after year. Well, this was the game earlier in the season, the last couple of minutes against UT Rio Grande Valley. She knocks down a couple of threes, and look how the bench erupts sure. after those two makes. Yeah, they are a very close unit. And you love to see kids that are there every day in practice showing up, great teammates, great locker room kids, get a chance to knock one down with a game uniform on. And Graves was just about ready to shoot it. She ran into the defender. She's gonna inbound it here on the sideline is Graves, who came into the gym, talked about the work ethic that she had, came in over the summer with Rory Harmon, put in a lot of time, and it was a contagious kind of feeling, and he said, give it back shoot to it. her. 
<laughs> Coach Schaefer pointing back her way. Tiffany, she has played a total of five minutes and 43 seconds on the year. She's two out of two from the three-point line. If I'm Sarah Graves, I'm having a meeting with Coach afterwards saying, I produce when I get my five minutes. <laughs> Gisela Mall with the ball in her hands, taking her time, single digits on the shot clock. Muentanda off the mark there. It's all about making the most of your opportunities, right? Yeah, you know, if you're a one seed on your home floor, you're supposed to win the game by 40 or 50 against a 16 seed. And that's exactly what Texas has done this afternoon. It all starts with the, the size and the physicality just jumped off of me yesterday when they walked out to practice. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. are they a physical, long, tall team at every position? And the, the defensive intensity, the pressure is just, was just relentless. And no matter if they play the winner of Alabama or Florida State, whoever wins that game coming up next is gonna have to deal with the ball pressure and the one pass away pressure and the size that Texas is gonna throw at them. They are indeed Texas tough. They've got a grit and a competitive spirit about them that's just off the charts. And that mirrors their head coach. Drexel spins the time out here, 128 remaining in this ball game, will you think about how convincing you want to be able to win games? We said South Carolina handled business against Presbyterian earlier today. Iowa in action tomorrow against Holy Cross over on ABC at 3 p.m. We'll also see Jackson State taking on a three seed UConn as well over on ABC. And the Texas fans are pumped out. Let's talk about the atmosphere in here. We mentioned it before. It's been loud. This has been rowdy. We saw them line up before, but the support for the Horns has been terrific. Here's what's great about it. Vic Schaefer personally, we were told, bought 100 tickets <laughs> for Texas students to use today. And that's just a guy that gets it. You know, he understands the big, the big picture. And then Michael Huff, a former Texas football player, found out about it and also purchased 200. So 300 tickets were bought between Vic Schaefer and Michael Huff today that were used by the student section. And this building, very full on a Friday afternoon. I expect it to be just as, if not more, on Sunday when Texas is playing in that second round. You talk about how Coach Schaefer gets it. I mean, he's a beloved figure around these parts and in the sports section of the Austin American Statesman. Got a front page article. He made front page news. Big fisherman. He says, I don't, I don't fish. I go catch him. <laughs> He's a catcher, not catch a him. fisher. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, as he caught some of the best talent in the country. I just want Graves to get one off. I got a feeling it'll go in if she if she gets an opportunity. 25 and white in this far corner. I think everyone else is expecting or anticipating Whoa. that here as well. We'll just lay out for the reaction if it You're does happen. Right? Yeah. The champions out of the CAA not giving up, showing great fight as we talked about. Five seniors for that group. Aaron Doherty, Brooke Mullen, Hedda Satman, Jasmine Ballantyne, Aaron Sweeney for the Drexel Dragons. And Aaron Doherty, who's at the free throw line, is one of those seniors I just mentioned. And a couple of NCAA tournament runs throughout their careers. They faced Georgia back in that first round in 2021, but here the number one seed in Region 4. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really impressed with the joy that Drexel has continued to play with in this game. They got, they got doubled up on the scoreboard, but they continued to fight, play hard, they ran their stuff. They never broke apart, they stayed together, they, they've enjoyed the moment. I mean, some of the special times in March, we can get easy locked in on the teams that win. The teams that lose, man, they have earned their way here. And great memories for this team out of Philadelphia to come to Austin for a couple of days and have the experience of 
this women's championship. Well done by Drexel. Their coach reminded them to just embrace this pressure, and be in this moment. Maris Baker who got on the board for them and led the way with 10 points. Yeah, she told her kids, Amy did yesterday before they started their practice, we are a grateful program and we'll be grateful and thankful for everything that we've had this year. Enjoy this moment and they go home as a 19 and 15 team. Advance the NCAA tournament to go right back to work and recruiting. Always a foul from the Colonial, just too much out of the Big 12 today from the Texas Longhorns. And Texas now will await the winner of Florida State and Alabama coming up at around 5.30 Eastern time on ESPN2, a game that I think will be one of those last two possession games. Both teams really athletic, kind of wired the same way. Christy Curry and Brooke Wyckoff, two of the better coaches out of the ACC and the SEC, getting ready to go out of here in about an hour. And that does it. A convincing opening round win for the Texas Longhorns as they'll move on to the second round. Great effort overall from everyone that touched the floor for the Longhorns. Madison Booker, the career night she had, dishing out passes, 14 assists, most by a Texas player in NCAA tournament history. She got it done, she facilitated, ran this offense, and the Longhorns are moving on. Your thoughts, Jimmy? Well, they're a machine offensively when they can get their post game going. Now, Shaley Gonzalez today had a big, big game shooting the ball. That's a big thing, I think, for Texas as they try to advance through this bracket. Vic Schaefer also understands and appreciates how well and how hard Drexel played today. His kids, though, were just too dominant. Started off with Madison Booker, her ability to see the ball, see the floor, move the ball. The assist numbers back it up. But this is a defensive team that is a real, real problem. Drexel ultimately, Tiffany, had no, no, no answer for that ball pressure and the denial pressure one pass away. Just physically dominated all five spots, did Vic Schaefer's kids. Well, taking a look at our bracket, they will await the winner of Florida State, Alabama, as you mentioned. How about Tania Latson and the job that she has done for the Seminoles this season? A prolific score for the Knowles. Sarah Ashley Barker, a big time presence and playmaker for the Crimson Tide as they look to duke it out in our next game. Vic Schaefer told his club yesterday, you did not practice like a number one seed supposed to practice. Well, 24 hours later, they played like a number one seed is supposed to play. Once again, our final from the Moody Center, 82-42 in favor of the Texas Longhorns. For Jimmy Dykes and the rest of our great crew, I'm Tiffany Green saying thanks for watching. We out from Houston.